And we're live. Yep. All right. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Shout out to uh, Seymour. For, Seymour, big up yourself. Thank you for being the first one in this morning. SRN Odetta is right there. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up, shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers, the Uber driver, the Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the garbage truck driver. Shout out to the bus driver. Shout out to the med medical field personnel. Shout out to law enforcement personnel. Shout out to... Every single clean-hearted, good-hearted person who wants good for others as much as you want good for yourself. You're up and out to get it this morning in an honest way. I commend you, big you up, and I say shout out to you. Yes, here we are on another beautiful morning. It's Tuesday already. Monday is gone and we can't take it back. Wednesday is not here yet and we can't call it forward. So all we have is today, Tuesday. We are in the moment. Yes? And we got a couple of things to talk about this morning. Shout out to everybody tuning in this morning. Sharon Ingram, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Sarah Caliente, hot, is in the building. Sharon Spence is here. Shay says, good morning, everyone. Bless up yourself at SoFlo TV and your family. Same to you, Shay. Sean Cassell is in the building, says, morning, fam. And please hit that like button as you join the live. Thank you for those who do. King Biggs, big up yourself, fam. Morning. Wayne Nathan and Miss Goldie Robinson, Karen Notice, Elaine Brown, Senior Sexy is in the building. Thank you for being here. Audrey Wright says, morning, fam and present teacher. Kaitai Jai Empress is in the building this morning. Says, up, up, up. And I'm wearing my up, up, up shirt this morning. That's wake up, wise up, and rise up. Yes, sir. Asarin Odetta and Seymour, you don't know already, right? Onika St. John Jones is here. Rosalind Smichael is here. Sandra Ellis is here. If I didn't call your name, Lil Red Gucci, too, thank you for being here. Julie Tapper, good morning. If I didn't call your name, you already know it's love and respect. Same way. And thank you for tuning in once again. All right. Let's get into our topics. Oh, before I get into my topics, um, let me say, this is how I'm starting off this morning. Message of the day. If you're in a relationship, right, you don't have to be your partner's competition. Matter of fact, it's not wise to be a partner's competition. See, whoever is leading in the relationship, it's okay to become their cheerleader and their supporter. You understand? That's the reason why you see, like, some people very accomplished. And when you see what's behind them, you're like, damn, I didn't know he had so many children. Oh, wow. I didn't know he had a wife. I didn't know he had this. I didn't know he had that. And it's because, you know, that saying they have, they say behind every successful man, there's a strong woman that's holding it down or vice versa. Behind a lot of successful women, there are strong men holding it down. Whether it's putting his career on hold to become a stay-at-home dad while she goes off and ascend into the corporate world, etc. And, and vice versa. You know, sometimes you see a man so successful and you're like, how the hell does he get all the time to be in 12 places at once? And guess what? He's not in 12 places at once. He's probably in six of them. And somebody else who is his partner is holding down the other six and making it look easy. Like say, him really the 12 places at once. Yeah. And they don't mind not taking the glory. You could give it all to him because at the end of the day, when he secures that bag, it comes to us, the house, me, that kind of thing. So that goes for man or woman. I just woke up with that on my mind this morning. Like in a lot of relationships, people tend to end up becoming their partner's competition, you know? And I think people do that because they are viewing their relationship from a mind state of, I got to plot my way out of this. This is, I'm um, in it, but just in case it ends. You know, if you're in your relationship like that, then your relationship probably isn't going to last. If you're always planning an out, you know, you start to expel too much energy planning an out instead of expelling energy investing in. You understand? So it's how you look at your thing. But I thought I would leave that on the table this morning. No long talking. I want to get into my topics that I have for you. And we are going to get into our topics. The lines are open and you can call in as you feel like this morning. All right. We're going to get a little festive now. All right. We will export. 
and become a rich nation. The right honorable Andrew Holness just gave a speech and a part of his speech was that we will export and become a rich nation. I got so much to say. But in that breath, I have something to say to the right honorable Andrew Holness with no disrespect intended. And I'm going to be very blunt. But I also have a message to the Jamaican people in the process. Right? That's one topic. The next topic. A Clarendon party patron shot dead after allegedly confronting a man that he accused of being gay. All right. Hmm. Fast in a people business till it costs your life. But we're going to talk about that this morning. I want to go into this whole EP that Vibes Cartel put out called Numb. I've listened to it quite a few times now. Right. And I have the I have the. Track list down pat the name of the songs what each song is saying who inspired this ep all these other kind of things what i really hear in this ep and these kind of things and if you've heard it or you are a fan of what is your favorite track on this ep called numb we're gonna get into that this morning as well and i have a little message on the side for zojak zojak worldwide zojak worldwide uh works with vibes cartel a lot distributes a lot of his work but i have an issue with zojak and i'm gonna let it be known this morning right hopefully when i let it be known as loud as this then vibes cartel will also get the message as well and adjust his business he's a wise businessman so this is in his favor and you know them kind of thing there minister marion hall lady saw banned by church ahead of her some fest appearance Minister Marion Hall, once known as Lady Saw, chat to my back, chat to my back. If they want to laugh. <laughs> yeah, Minister Marion Hall, who is was known as Lady Saw, banned by church ahead of some fest. When I saw that headline, I had to get into that story. What am I banner for? She's trying to spread the word. She's trying to spread the gospel. So we're going to get into all that. Sarah Cayente, you say vaccine is your favorite? <laughs> oh, it's a vaccine is bad. Um, Mrs. Nea says banned LOL. Bless up to her. We're going to get into that. Um, Sarah Cayente says the search is over also. Mm. Oh, that Onika St. John Jones says banner, yes. <laughs> banner, yes. We don't want Tarina in the name of God. Hi, come out. I don't know. I don't know. But let's get into all that. Where do we start? Where do you want to start off this morning? You want to start off with the message to the Prime Minister and the Jamaican people um, following his, we will export and become rich, a rich nation. You want to address that first? Or you want us to go into the Lady Saw band stuff? Or you want to go into the Vibes Cartel album something? Or the Clarendon story about the man who confronted the man who he thought, yo, yeah, but boy, and him end up dead. Which one, <laughs> which one I want to get into this morning first? Yes, Prime Minister, definitely. I only wanted you. Yeah, um, Sarah Cayente, that one is bad. I only wanted, yo, well, tell me which one we are getting to first, man. Andrew with another trick. Anyone. Next person said, Andrew, he meant line his pockets. All right, Dirty T. Shark says, message to Andrew again. It looks like it's going to be Andrew first this morning. That's pre-election tales. What's going to get rich? Not the people. Who's going to get rich? Not the people. Cartel. Sarah Cayente says, cartel, prime minister, something. I, I look like a prime minister lead, you know. Kandro. <laughs> Julie Tabas says, Kandro. Kandro. Andrew, Kandro. Okay, um, BB story expert, I want to know. The phone is ringing already, people. I could take a call early. Live on the air with SoFlo, good morning. Morning, morning SoFlo. Morning, family. What going? Yeah, morning to all our listeners. Good morning. Andrew, it is. Subscribe. All right. Yeah, talk. before, 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 yeah, you get the surprise in this time, listen. Mm-hmm. Now, I have one message of more. You're putting a your message in your feelings. All right, talk to me. All right, me just know them call you. Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't want to make up, but I'm back in my place. All right. 
All right. You know what, Miss it? And it very It's very serious. Yeah, it's very serious. All right, fix up and your phone. And Jamaican people, them. Fix, fix up Hold your on. phone, fix up your phone. You have a speaker, Bluetooth, or something, or something like one. Fix up your phone. Yeah, fix up, fix up yeah, your phone. Yeah, we need a speaker. All right, talk to it. Yeah. You know, we don't, we don't find the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, the I'm going to see something women are really like. I'm, and come like the Jamaican people, them come like them not realize. All right, since we come, since we come to New York, we go downtown New York, and my people them tell me, say, back in the 80s, right here, mm. downtown Brooklyn, like A Street, Oak Street, there's the whole of downtown Brooklyn, them say it black. I'm going to ask you if you round it up for me real quick because I want to get into it before me lose my message. See? So if you give okay, yeah, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's a... So I'm telling you now. All right, talk to me now, man. Yeah. My people I'm tell me, say, you're back in the 80s right now, I don't town Brooklyn, only for black people. And them do a thing they call real gentrification and get out the black people them. Mm. Some white people and put down there and bring up the value of the place. Seeing. So where are trying, sir? All right, brother, brother, call now and go too good. See there, I'm not doing nothing to the phone. Just can't hear nothing. It's not working. I don't like cutting people off. But that message that didn't take too long, and he now nah, come with the same thing. So me have to go on with my message. Here's my message. All right, so this big old headline. <laughs> On the front of my sorry, my brother, we have to go forward with this. We will export and become a rich nation. This is the big old headline this morning. Shout out to the Jamaica Observer. The Prime Minister says several serious international investors at Expo Jamaica is who he was talking to. And he says we will export and become a rich nation. Now, I remember one time, right, where they said, Yo, so flow. Over on your platform, all you do is all you do is talk about Jamaica problems and you don't ever come up with no solution. Me, myself, and this audience took time, pen and paper, painstakingly came up with about 15 things that needed to be changed. And we also attached the way in which it could be facilitated. So problem, solution, and a way to get to the solution. We work it out, you know. And I purposely sent, I, I sent it to the right Honorable Andrew Holness, among other people who are connected to him, right? Hoping that they would at least look at it and say, all right, this looks workable. But time went by. It's been a few years. This is one of the stuff that was on the list that he's talking about, right? We will export and become a rich nation. Moa, you hear a message first, and then I'm going to say what I have to say again. But this time, I have a message for the people as well, because the election time is looming. So trick career go on, right? All right. So Prime Minister Andrew Holness says that in order for Jamaica to become a rich nation, we must export. Duh. Duh. Must I talk about in you know, the 80s and the 90s and when my grandfather them did a commercial farming and these things. I come from a whole farming community in a Clarendon, Jamaica, Dessa. Most of the people them there send their children to university and beyond off of farming, right? And uh, to see now, or for years now, Jamaica was exporting, uh, was importing more than we have ever exported. And it's like people weren't even taking our exports no more. Or was it our leaders that were making these deals where it's okay? Like, for instance, it's okay to import ganja into Jamaica from Canada in a 2023, but Jamaica can't export no ganja go to Canada. Are we known for good, good ganja, right? Who's, who's putting these kind of deals together? Okay. So the Prime Minister comes out and says, we must export to become a rich nation. Holness made the comment on Thursday during the official opening ceremony of the Expo Jamaica 2023, which is expected to attract over 18,000 visitors across four days. We will export and become a rich nation, the Prime Minister stated. 
The Expo has also been held annually since 1971, with the exception of 2020 to 2022 due to the COVID-19 corona pandemic. That's the only time it took a break from 1971 before we before me born and them time that till now as a child growing up in jamaica when he would hear the outside broadcast it would sound so exciting and it was an exciting event to visit in late years and later years i would also make it a point of duty to visit the expo and i've always been fascinated by the gems that you discover are manufactured in jamaica this is him talking quote unquote and what is the essence of the expo it is to expo the productive capacity, the innovation, the ingenuity, and the creativity of Jamaica's manufacturing. <laughs> Holness went on to describe the event as the largest expo the expo has ever been. We're also happy that we are seeing significant interest for our international counterparts in all areas, in distribution, retailers, hotels, purchasers, potential partners in various manufacturing endeavors. This is him talking still. He said several serious international investors are visiting the expo, some of who have already struck business deals and are also on the island to discover other investment opportunities. The expo is a multi-sectional endeavorous showcasing Jamaica's manufacturing capabilities across various areas, whether we have primary producers, we have promising startup businesses, whether it is faction, whether it is construction, whether it is in food, we have broad-based manufacturing industries here in Jamaica. I'm certain that as a result of this expo and the exposure that Jamaica will get, our manufacturing will increase even greater. How? How? How when you're not put you're putting paperwork in place to make sure that it's not so. You have farmers that really want to farm up their land, but it's not worth it for them anymore. Right? Right. The sound policies of this administration will ensure that Jamaica recovers quickly and that the consumption power that is lost by virtue of inflation is recovered. Sounds so Huh. that the incomes lost by virtue of all of any fallout in employment that occurred as a result of the pandemic and that those jobs are recovered as well. It is also, it is good economic management that will ensure that Jamaican people really feel and experience prosperity. This him talking again. The expo is being hosted by the Jamaica Manufacturers and Exporters Association Limited, and it is the Caribbean's largest exhibition and trade show highlighting manufacturers, service providers, primary producers, exporters, and tourism industry under one roof. Big something. On Thursday, the Expo saw registrants from a multitude of countries. From a multitude of countries. This is not... This is this lights brighten my eyes. Um, this is not just some little Jamaica thing where I be a Jamaican daddy. This is a the largest expo, right? And it's been here since 1971. And this is where they all gather and meet. There are people with deep pockets that are sitting in this expo. And this man, our prime minister, has the floor to speak truth into power and then go pencil whip some things. And make it work. But all we've heard for so long. All we've heard for so long is one bag of long talking. Right? One bag of long talking. So on Thursday, the Expo saw registrants from a multitude of countries. Including Ghana had a representative there. The United Kingdom had representatives there. The United States had representatives there. Other Caribbean countries like Trinidad and Tobago, Antigua, Barbuda. You name them, they were all there. All this is, the expo is bringing all these deep pocket people. When I say deep pocket, you know what I mean. People have money or they're connected to money or they're a part of entities who move money. And they are there to see, okay, what does Jamaica have to offer now? And what we can invest in here to get money for us and to get money 
flow in their way as well. These opportunities are put forth right in front of our prime minister. And for the, here's a disclaimer. For the people who are going to say, here we go again. Oh, not always a beat up Andrew. And the prime minister can do everything. Let me quickly explain something to you. A prime minister, I see, is like a school principal. Okay? Surely, the prime minister cannot do everything by himself. He is only one man. But what he is tasked to do is to put people in a position to be able to do what is required to be done. Now, these jobs are supposed to be performance-based. If I put you as Minister of National Security and murder can't stop around the country and crime just going out of control for year after year after year after year, then I'm forced to remove you from your position and put someone else. It's not a lifelong position you're in, right? I'm forced to remove you and put someone who will be more effective. We don't see the Andrew Holness, Holness administration working like that. Similar to school, a principal cannot teach grade one through 12, right? But the principal can oversee the teachers who he is appointed to do these work in these different levels different subjects, all that other stuff. If everybody who is going to Miss Jones' class keeps on failing or 95% of her class fails almost every semester, it's time for our principal to take a look at Miss Jones and start to question her credential or question the way that she is teaching the class, correct? Because we can't have 95% of your class failing back to back to back semesters and you're still in that position. What are we turning out? So that is how his duty is. That's an explanation for those who like to defend, even when he's not under attack. Because, you know, a lot of Jamaican people, they're into their parties. They're not really into what is best for the country. My mother, me born, come see my mother and my father, labor rights, so me a labor right till me dead. My born, come see my granny, a PMP, so me a PMP till me dead. And they're stuck on a party. And they're never into the details of what this party can do. And then the party says, okay, this is what we're running on. These are the things we're going to do. And you say, okay, I like those, so I'll vote for you. Now you hold them accountable because you better accomplish those by the time the next election round comes around. Or else I'm going to be sitting there looking at you like, mm -mm. stop. Don't tell me vote for you again. And make you do the same thing again. Oh, no, man, we didn't have time and we couldn't get through this. No, you fulfill what you ran on, what your party promise was, what your, 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 your the box you stood on. You need to fulfill that. And if it's not fulfilled, then the people vote you out and vote in somebody else who is available to see if they can do it. And if they cannot do it, vote them Ross out again and vote the next one back in again because I'm sure, and they're always fighting for power in that position. So they will, one of them will eventually give you some of what you want, right? But what I see Jamaican people doing is they're stuck on their one party. And the one party, even when they don't fulfill any of their promises made during the election period, campaigning period, they still vote for the same people back into power again. Here what I tell the people them say, me don't want to cry to me no more. I'm at the point now with Jamaican people where I'm like, I don't even want to hear them cry anymore. I don't want to hear them talk about things hard no more. I don't want to hear them talk. Because you're not holding your leaders accountable, my friend. You are not holding your leaders accountable. You just keep on celebrating and re-voting back in the same people who keep on giving you the same thing. So there is no need for anybody to listen to you cry anymore. Boy, things tougher, yeah, than a dog. May I tell you, say, yeah, um, so you're going to vote? Yeah, man, may I go vote? You don't know, say, I show my thing there. Or you don't know, say, a PMP my thing there. And when you look, they've been hurting and starving and suffering under the same banner for the longest. Stop. It's time to stop, okay? Now, I big up to um, Andre. Andre, a lot of people I follow Andre, um, him, I haven't I haven't tuned into his stuff in a while, but Andre Stevens, yeah, I saw him put a like a misinformation thing out there the other day, and I replied to it. And usually him replied to my message, but he never replied to that one. 
you know, somebody put up JLP, PMP, and same thing. Somebody said JLP, his banner actually said JLP, PMP, UIC, same thing. That's a dangerous message. I wrote and I said, JLP, PMP, same thing. We know that for sure because of what we've seen over time. Nobody can take what we see and experience over time. So when we say, oh no, I'll give you the same thing. Tuano, same thing. Two different sides of the same coin. JLP, PMP. We're absolutely right to say that. But you can't say JLP, PMP, UIC, same thing. You have never been under UIC leadership. You have never given anybody else a chance except for JLP, PMP. You cannot continue to sit on the sideline when you're given an option and an out to say, I'm sticking to, this, to, to the, say, the foolishness that I know. You have to try the other. Now, yeah, people are going to say, so flow, the UIC, honestly, now nah, move fast. And that's been my gripe. They're not moving fast. They're not big enough. They're not making enough noise. And I don't see the people gravitating that way. I've said it before. To the UIC, you're going to have to make an explosion, my friend, in order for more people to come under that banner. A lot of the people are ready to jump ship, but they're scared. And them don't know where to jump to. But I'm trying to tell the people that if you've never given the UIC a chance, how do you know what you get from them? It is dangerous to use your platform to tell people JLP, PMP, UIC, same thing. It's not. It's not. JLP, PMP, same thing. UIC, we don't know. Okay, if you're ready for something different, give the UIC a chance. What's the worst that could happen is that they give you the same thing JLP and PMP has been giving you. So what do we do? We vote them out and forever never deal with them again because they sat back and saw what we were getting before. And they promised that we would never get that. And then come on, give it that too. Then you will never exist in Jamaica anymore for us. Now we are going to stick to the two evil where we know. Because when we did let you in, you sabotaged it. So the UIC is really walking a thin line here. And will be held to accountability more than everybody else that have been before them. Right? But make it happen though. Make it happen. You can't sit back and talk about the same thing. So that's the message to the people. And the message to the prime minister now himself, sir, sir, not all of us. Let me look in that camera. Here. Not all of us are slow, okay? And when I, and no disrespect intended, not all of us are slow. Not all of us are blinded. Not all of us are so distracted that we know absolutely nothing that is going on. A lot of us out here are paying attention. A lot of us out here are well-read. And we are paying attention. We're analytical thinkers. And we are watching your performance year in, year out. Year in, year out. I notice that election time is coming up. And I notice that your words are getting very sweet. Right? We will export and become a rich nation. Hmm. Does that export and become a rich nation include like our local farmers and our producers then let's say producers manufacturers does it include them all the way down trickle down to the daily workers the hourly workers or you're talking about we will export and become a rich nation as in your top five percent of people where you deal with because if we're going to export to become a rich nation we could start with ganja Mm. We could start with ganja. And I've said this for the longest. And Jamaica has been on the back burner, which I am dead surprised about. Big up to Chief Curry, man. I was looking over some stuff that Chief Curry was doing up um in his area there. Uh, when we see him, I tried like a real lion through the ganja field there. I was like, yo. Okay, so the chief understands, right? He understands commerce. He understands what time is taking place right now the global market when it comes to this thing called ganja so who are we trying to please that we are sitting on so much good ganja 
and we continue to destroy so much good ganja and imprison people for dealing with this ganja while we are importing ganja and setting up these dispensaries across the island and making the paperwork so complicated and the startup fees are whatever fee is requ required so weird so much that the average man in Jamaica or the average ganja farmer then is being wiped out of the market. So foreigners are come sell we ganja. You are going to import ganja where people grow in some artificial way into the country, into Jamaica. Jamaica will have sunshine almost all year round and it makes the ganja down there potent and good as well. And you're going to give away all that to welcome somebody else stuff in. Do you see how the world is running with ganja? Eh? Uh, it, it's becoming a trillion. It's a trillion dollar industry already. Talk about becoming. It's a trillion dollar industry already. And other countries are jumping on board and are making a ton load of money. Money that we can use to set up shop in another way. There's a lot of little youth in Jamaica that's very intelligent, but they come from very poor socioeconomic backgrounds, right? And mommy and daddy can only afford to send them so far. You know what? You can do the rest, you know? Yes. We, have, we need something where their parents don't, don't have to worry about. Say, for instance, them want to go to trade school. Open a big old trade center in Jamaica. Something like what I described here in Florida. Whereas, I forgot the name of the place. that I said that everybody can go there here. That's why I don't look at Americans as, oh, I'm down and I'm hurting. I'm like, how? You born here, you raised there, you're a grown person. You had all these opportunities, even free schooling and free daycare until you earn. And then they earn on the job as they learn these trades. You can't talk about any woodworking, furniture making, barbering, um, mechanic, auto mechanic, that like are just as a range. Job core. Thank you. Thank you. T95 South. Job core. If Jamaica had a job core in it, a lot of them youth here would have off of the street. A lot of them youth here would have out of badness. A lot of the... This is the thing about them though. The youth now take no talk. They're not come for suffer. And they're, some of them are so misguided, right? That they pour their energy into something wrong. They have that warrior spirit. They're not here. They make up their minds. They rather did not live like dog. And when you have the country running in a way where so many of them are forced to live like dog or forced to just barely scrape by, ain't too many people willing to barely scrape by from this new generation. We criticize them about it sometimes. But we have to give credit where credit is due also. They're not like your generations before, who you are going to continue to tell the same thing over and over and over and over. Them are new people here. Yeah? No, man. One time you go here, no, afraid that. Yo, me done talk. Me no, I hear no more talk from him. And they're off to do what they're off to do. Then we deal with the consequences as a nation. Right? So start there with ganja. But let's talk about our food. Let's talk about our food. Come here, foreign. I'm going to go at the store, you know, the vegetable stand, the food place where them sell natural food. I'm going to pick up yam. I'm going to say green banana. I'm going to say cocoa, dashing, breadfruit, all them something there. And none of it comes from Jamaica. <laughs> none of it comes from Jamaica. And there, is, there are thriving Caribbean communities here and African communities where want them food. Them kind of food there. When I heard that Jamaica was importing chicken back at one point, I, 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 I really did a scratch my head because I was like, what? But maybe because I come from how we used to raise chicken. We, I'm seven years old. I cut off chicken head in the people. Like, yeah, string them upside down. We do the slaughtering and everything. My grandmother and grandfather did commercial farming, used to supply the local community and the grocery stores with chicken. And we have people line up how we get and come them coming to work on a wage. My grandmother and grandfather organize it and employ people in the community. And whole heap a big pot cursing pan a boil with whole heap of chicken. I come out of the chicken house and we used to have them in the hundreds. And we're responsible for them killing, clean them up. I don't know about dip chicken in a hot water and strip off feather. 
still clean. My grandmother used to be the inspector. She would, you know, you have to take the fine here, them off of the wings and stuff and make it look pretty. Fold the, the wing them like this. All right, tuck the two leg them in a yeah, so we have to gut them, clean them out, fix them up, everything. Maybe because I look at it differently. But why are we importing half of the stuff that we're importing anyways? All that stuff could be produced locally. And it hurts to speak to a lot of people in Jamaica because who run these kind of businesses because the, their story is sad. It's like, boy, Masa, tell you the truth. Me love the farm in the no car that me do from me born till now. Me come see me people in my farm, but we can't survive off of them something there no more so flow. No, sir. Because we can't compete with what them are import. <laughs> Should I go into the dangers of those? I won't. Colonel, we come look for me and try to do me something. But I'm trying to tell the people that watch with all them import something there. Jamaicans really don't know how good they got it. You know? I I used to watch my brothers, but I wouldn't do that. Yeah, me I cut off the chicken head. Used to string them up upside down with one long bamboo. Run the bamboo between the coffee tree them because we had a whole heap of coffee tree around my place. We clear out that area in you know, the coffee piece where the slaughter and go on. We have seven enough. Run the long bamboo through the coffee tree them, run it down so, so we have like a long pole and then tie up the chicken foot them. And I will be tying up like six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them one time. They're hanging upside down. Some people want a chicken sandwich or a chicken salad, but they don't want to know where the chicken come from or how it's prepared. Well, I can tell you how it's prepared from growing it, from it get them from them little so on a tweak, tweak, tweak. And we have to feed them through the night and put up light down there and all these things. From that all the way up until how it reach on your table or in the grocery store, right? We come up from that. I mean, it's to cut off one head down there, so. And while it's flattering, you have to tie them tight in a car. If them flatter off of the something, them going to butter, butter up on the ground, jumping around like this. And it's going to beat up the meat. <laughs> beat up the meat. No pun intended. But it's going to beat up the meat to where it brews up the chicken and you can't sell the chicken. See? So you cut one down here, so, and while it's a flash, you know, one blood pan you, so you run go down here, so, and cut one from down here, so by the time you reach back up here, so that one slow down, flattering. So you cut the next one head, and we are drop the head in our bucket. Man, listen. Beautiful times. And people was making money. But ever since Jamaica start with this, everybody is allowed to import, but we can barely export. I don't know who engineered these deals, but sir, you need to change that. So your big speech about we will export and become a rich nation. We don't need no more bugger talk, sir. And that is respectfully said. We don't need no more bugger talk. We need you to actually put things in place. To where go to other people's expo then tell them say jamaica have chicken for sale come back and open up a whole heap of chicken house um farming chicken farm commercial chicken farm tell them say jamaica have dashing breadfruit and cocoa and come back and tell the farmer them say come on let's go let's go drive them you understand and that the people them want productivity and then we can see some pro progress or some of this prosperity that you're talking about but enough, Jamaica cannot see your prosperity. So we don't want any more. We, we hear you, but, but we also know that election is coming. So you're readying up again. But please ready up with some truth, something you actually plan to stand behind. All right? That is my message to you, the right Honorable Andrew Holness, with no disrespect intended, and my message to the Jamaican people this morning. Vicky Victory says, oh, yes, Black Goddess Henry says, I was scared. Me no, no, me no grow, we grew up different. When I look at my children and look, like, I bring my kids to Jamaica, they over there naming the chickens, you know? Then I name the chicken, this one is Henry, that one is that. And I'm like, you can't name the chicken because that chicken could be dinner later. Oh, they're going to be hurt when they see the process. We and I bush me come from you know in the hills, you know. Yeah, it's beautiful up there. We're not living a hut neither to the people them who think, oh, he's in from the bush and he's with 
we don't live in huts. We have our nice houses and these kind of things and we own we land for generations and them kind of something there. See, in Clarendon, you don't know which part of the thing there. You don't, those of you who've been there and watched the videos, you know how the place set up already and thing. But it's farming. It's farming. And we need to get back to that again. So, whoever is going to vote and vote for Andrew Holness this go around. Manasa no more. Karen Notice says, So, Flo, are you sure you don't come from Christiana? Karen, I used to go to Christiana Primary at one point. I not come from Christiana. I come from right outside of Christiana. Spallings, me used to go to school to. I'm a walk. When time bus can't or we can't get transportation to go the other way, we used to come through Christiana and sometimes I walk from Christiana, go home to the house. Little, little picnic. Them time the way I buy sock sock. A sock sock, we call it, you know. Them not call it sock sock no more. We used to buy sock sock and quarter bread and butter and these things. I come home from school hungry and something now we have to walk. Cause taxi full up and not only two men have taxi them time there and can't carry everybody and it's getting dark and all kind of something. So I'm very familiar with Christiana. I'm always in Christiana. So you can almost say I come from Christiana too. Because I could walk from Christiana to my house. Unless it's a really, really... You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good walk, but we, we walk. She says, me and your soul flow. I used to love killing the chickens. I grew up in a farming community. Healthiest time of my life. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, real food. When the earth does I give you food. You plant seed and beer food. And we supply a whole lot of people. I made a good living off of it. Mrs. Nia says, I see the Jamaican Observer just posted an American traveled to Jamaica with 50 grand on them, avoided a fine. We seen an American go down there with a gun. A gun. And got caught with the gun. And got fined. And got to go home. We seen Americans go down there. These are recent stories I covered. Go down there and got caught with how much? 14, 15 kilos of cocaine or something like that. All four of them got let go with a warning and a fine. So, yeah, I know nothing new. These days we have to be careful what we eat. More than ever, it's important. But more than ever, our government is sinking the island into eating what everybody else I eat. You eat what everybody else eat, you start to become what everybody else is. Meaning, be prepared for the high blood pressure rise. Be prepared for the diabetes rise. Be prepared for the obesity rise. Be prepared for the heart attack rise and the cancer rise and people dying younger and getting sick by things that normally used to affect just the older people. Everybody I get it now and all these things. Be prepared for a medical catastrophe. And the worst part is we don't even have the medical facilities to facilitate when the, the, the citizens them start get sick out. So we hurt all the way around, right? Christine Simpson says, that's already there so flow. Young people having high blood pressure. Yeah. One bag of salt and everything that's foreign and it's salt up and exactly because it's not a part of our regular diet. But it's 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 just unhealthy across the board. And now we're eating new stuff, right? Kind of cheaper and people are trying to make a dollar stretch because you see it's a whole cycle. People trying to make a dollar stretch because if you've seen the weekly wages or the fortnight wages or monthly wages of some of these hardworking people, you literally just want to cry. You just want to cry. I keep on repeating this. Every time I'm in Jamaica, I just give away money. I try not to come back with no money, right? And I just give it. I give it, but I give it to people who I'm around. Like, for instance, if I stay at a villa or something, you see the security youth at the villa, I'll make sure I give him. When I was in Jamaica the last time, I was I'm walking to Pizza Hut because the kids wanted pizza. You know, when you travel with your kids, you can't be too hard line with them. Like, no, you're in a Jamaica, so I be a yam and banana, you go eat. My picnic, them will not eat. Them will, them will hunger strike for me. And then it will make my whole time there 
feel like, oh my God, you, you know? So we try to find them what they like as well. So we, we go get some pizza and stuff. And there was a security guard in there. He said, so flow. We said, yeah, man. And he said, yo, so flow. Yo, what? Um, Jesus Christ. We never know. Say blah, blah, blah. And he was like, yo, so flow. Can I take a picture with you? And we said, yeah, man. And I think wifey took the picture, um, use him phone and take the picture and thing. And, you know, I'm still there and talk a little bit. And then he was off on his way. He never asked me for nothing. He never said nothing. Now, at that time, it's it's in my brain, like, you know how much he makes per week out here? I mean, I surveyed the area where I'm working on how easy it is for him to dead out there. Because <laughs> I see the unscrupulous group of people all over the place. And I'm like, him can get it. So while I was leaving... Him left him spot. So I drive, go back over there, and wasn't there. So I drive out the whole parking lot, and I saw him at the end of the parking lot, look like him, take a break. And I just roll up on him foot, open the window, and go so and say, hold on, pandis. And him hold it. And then he was like, you see, like, you for real? You, you serious? You, you know? So we just got them kind of people there. The other time, it was a woman that was cleaning our villa. While we were out, and we we out all the time, so me that me we in there morning uh, as day breaks, so get something for eat now morning. There I go road go look food, and just gone, and we gone another part, another part. And every time I came back, I could literally eat my food off of the floor of the place that I was staying. And one and and one of the time I came, and the lady was there cleaning, but had her child cleaning with her. I me say you say all them something I you know. Because I know what kind of life that is. You know? I know what kind of life that is. Come help me clean some of them places. And she said she's the only one that have to clean this whole side. And they were all houses. Have some house line up. Line up, line up. Over there's up on the beach side. And me say, you alone? I have to clean all them here? She said, yes, man. And we have to move fast, too. When me tell us I could have eat off of the floor in there, how we clean every day. And she not touched on none of my stuff. And I felt so comfortable. I just left my stuff laid out and go about my business and come back, come back to the whole place, clean up. So I gave her. That's the first time that wifey was like, how much you give her? I'm tell her. And she was like, you know, so you give her more than what she worked for, like, for a whole week. I said, really? That little bit? Them really work for that. Because if me did long, I probably would have turned criminal if me couldn't get no other opportunity. Because me not work for that for no whole week. But just to show you, sir, the people them willing to work, we have to put things in place to where they can prosper as well. Hard work and no prosperity can be very discouraging. Yeah? All right. Me not like when me go home and feel like me still there foreign. Me want <laughs> nyam with food. we grow in a fluid grown. Audrey Wright says, absolutely. That's why I can't do um I can't do like big hotels. Nothing against the all-inclusive and big hotels. Matter of fact, I tell most of you Jamaican people who haven't been home in a while and you're there far and I go on like you're afraid. Me tell us uh, when you go, if you're afraid of nothing, just go on all inclusive. And, and then take it from there. Venture out slowly. Because I understand the fear. I understand you haven't been there in a while and all these things. Man like me run road. Me there everywhere. Right? Because I'm always there. So I understand the beat of the country, so to speak. You might be a bit out of timing. Right? But I can't go to these places because why would I leave America? Send me a go home. Got me yard. And when me reach, I choose a place where is beer American stay in there. And then... You know how them do the buffet style food and all that? Like pancakes and sausages and the egg what is not really egg and all these. Uh, we not eat them something there. I want some ackee and saltfish in the morning there. Yeah, I want some roast breadfruit fry over with some kalalu and them thing there in the morning. Them kind of something there. I want some cocoa tea, but the way how you grate tight and these kind of things. So I can't be in them kind of places. It's not that I wouldn't like to be, but for what? I'm not a tourist. <laughs> you know? And you don't get the feel. 
You don't get the real feel of Jamaica until you actually start really eat Jamaican food that's grown in Jamaica. Um, I remember one of my uncles said, say, yeah, man, you see the hog them? Our hog meat sweet, you know, not talk about, you know, eat pork. Our hog meat sweet because we are sweet, we are seasoned them from them whole life. <laughs> the man said, we are seasoned the hog from them whole life. So by the time we slaughter that and throw it on the fire, you know, you don't need nothing, you know. You just need to cook because I'm seasoned already. <laughs> and it's true. It's true because when I think about how my grandfather used to grow the pig them, the pig them get them bug food, yes. But the pig them mostly get, you see, every day when we are cooked dinner, we peel yam, banana, breadfruit, dashin, cocoa, wherever we are eat today, we peel. And I tell everybody, me never eat rice. Rice was only on Sundays for us. I swear to God, never name rice. Only on Sunday. Every day, me grow up on real food. Dashin, breadfruit, green banana, ripe banana, me a banana porridge, you, you banana fritters. We, <laughs> we just grow up on real food, right? Dashin, cocoa, planting, grow up on real food. And our real food is what keeps us a certain kind of way. And I don't want to go there and eat sausage and eggs, um, powder egg and sausage and powder um, orange juice. And, <laughs> and pancakes and clog up my belly. I want to eat some, some of them kind of food there. You know? Uh, I went and I asked for a manager. I said, I need some, Jam <laughs> some Jamaican food. <laughs> but yeah, big eat breadfruit food waste. Yeah, pig eat breadfruit. Yeah, the pig, the pig them eat. That's how we feed with, with animals. They used to eat all the stuff that we eat. So my uncle was right. By the time them ready for eat to cook, them season already them whole life because that's all they've been eating. So my own woman know. Can you tell your man say, ah, it's better. I don't know what you've been drinking lately. Start drink more pineapple juice. So if it affect you, don't you think it affects the animals as well? I jump here, come go. I fall in love with KFC. I'm in a yam. I don't eat KFC. I used to go to KFC in the US once in a blue moon. And I used to have to like tear off all the outside of the chicken and dash it away. By the time I done eat that food there, half of it get thrown away. Because all the butter, butter fry up on the outside and I peel back the skin. And it's white under there with a layer of fat that's about that thick. I can't eat them something there. I went to Jamaica, I peeled the skin off of the KFC, no fat under the skin. It's just the skin stuck to lean white meat. Me, I'll chew up the bone. And I know it's different. And I had a big stink about that too, years ago. I said, Jamaicans need to stop support KFC because they're my import chicken. And I had to take that back because the, the KFC in Jamaica was actually... Sourcing their chicken from locally. I me say that's why the chicken tastes different like it does. You try it. Try KFC in the US. Matter of fact, bring down two piece with you. And when you go, do my ritual. Cause as we go, we find a KFC. Do my go. Go to KFC and then compare the chicken and you will see what I'm telling you. Also, how it affects our body, right? Yeah. I keep on joking, but people don't believe me. I'm in Jamaica, I drink a cup soup, my hood starts stand up, and I, and I make the idea, and I'm not thinking sex. It's not on my mind at all. Sometimes you stiff up on yourself, you have to tuck it in your belt, you have to so tighten up your belt, you hold it till it go down, and these kind of things. I'm like, what? The food make your body act different. So nobody can tell me that it's not important. It has to be. It has to be. How, how come you eat the same food up here and I want to sleep? Same time. Same time I'm tired, I want to sleep. I mean, wake up and feel like I need rest. <laughs> you know, when you eat the food up and you wake up and feel like you need rest. Like you was running in your sleep. You're tired. I know, I know good food, that man. Good food supposed to make you feel like you want to do something. Not true? As me eat the food at Jamaica, so my body just start to act up. I'm like, yo, something in a this, and it's not just the food, the food, the drinks, something in a it. Yeah, real talk. So yeah, Mr. Owen, let's fix it up for you, sir. And nobody come with the long, the long promises. We don't want to hear them anymore. All right.
<laughs> Hard work, no progress makes you give up if you absolutely absolutely that's the message hard work and no progress make you give up if you're working too hard and your life is the same as a man that's not working it leads to you quitting true it leads to you being very discouraged and i mean how long can you do that you know let's be realistic even we even though we beat some people and be like yeah everybody want to be rich overnight but come on Let's give credit to the people who've been trying for decades. And them try all kind of something. And if them try all kind of something, we say, well, you should have stick to one thing and stick to it till it work out. Well, if them try multiple things, we say, yeah, I try too much things at one time. Well, if them, so yeah, beat the people them the wrong way. It's how the system is set up. And if you're going to be a prime minister that runs on prosperity, and how we are going to export and become a rich nation. These are your words. Then you have to start putting these things in place for us. Yeah? Jamaica KFC, not all that again. Why shame me? No, no. Yeah, I, um, it depends. It depends. I've never had a bad one, though. I'm eating it on the way to the airport. I'm eating it coming in like as soon as I reach. You know? Long for peace of my father, Rossi, I'm a saltfish. That's Christ, shit. Talk no, man. Talk no. Are them people there? Actually, you help. Me like street food when I'm in Jamaica. Especially when me I roll through the countryside. And me see a man with all a, you know, a stall set up over here. So, them kind of food, they usually be the best ones. My KFC meet me with a Heineken or a sorrel beer at the airport. <laughs> my KFC meet me. Bravo Wright says my KFC meet me with a Heineken or a sorrel beer at the airport. Sorrel beer is wifey thing. Right now we are looking for some sorrel beer because we ran out. She she brought back a whole, she bring back a whole bar, but it's done already. <laughs> so we're looking for some sorrel beer right now. See if we can get some a foreign yeah. Or we might have to make another trip to Jamaica soon. Yeah, man, sometimes we just go just fit, you know, look in real quick, grab some food and spin around and come back. That kind of stuff. So, uh, moving right along, because I don't want to tie up Miss Shakira time like I did yesterday morning. I don't think she was pleased. It took me hours to figure out why she had an attitude. And it took me more hours for her to start loving me up again for the rest of the day. Right? Because I was being selfish. See? So... I don't want to just run off with my thing and just mess up for our business. She's on a schedule too. And she have a lot of things to do too. So I'm going to move on to the next topic yeah. Okay, people want to stop talking about Jamaica KFC. May I get hungry in the early morning yeah. <laughs> Debbie, <laughs> Debbie, hear me now? I have to come off on a topic there, yes? Any food. Any food. Right now we have Aki. May I tell you one more thing about food before we leave? Right now, we have some Aki still left in our fridge there. And right now, I'm thinking, I mean, no, no. Something come in my head the other day. I said, remember when your granny used to use the corn pork? And she would have cut it up and fry it up after she, you know, she would scald it off so it's not so salty. And then she would have cut it up and fry it up and put the corn pork in the Aki. And it's all, yo, I said, me try it, you know. And from the other day, guess what me have at my house now? We have pork that is corn in. <laughs> the pork. The pork take weeks for corn. Proper. So me have the pork sit on the corn for right when we're ready for the for the pork for going at the hockey. I, and eating it, I felt like I was in Jamaica. Every time I eat it, I'm like, I'm in Jamaica. This is the vibe. It's just so nostalgic. Like when Miss Ruby did I cook it. And why? Anyway, I'm coming off of the food thing. <laughs> now you're talking my language. See? Let me come off of that. So here we are. Down in my place now. Clarendon party patron shot dead. We're we going to get to... Should we get to uh, Minister Marion Hall next? Or no one I mean, just roll? Talk to me. 60 seconds. Let me sip some of this ginger tea. <laughs> cinnamon toast cinnamon. Say so you making my stomach eat my back. <laughs> Yo. The first time I'm in the US and eat KFC. Vomited. Never again. It's not good. It don't taste nothing like what we have. Minister Marion Hall next. Roll. Purple has a roll. Once a minute, we need a couple more people. And then I'll decide. Let's see. 
The real queen. You already know Vicky Victory, but the real queen. Spice. Tall up. We are. <laughs> uh, wait there. I have a box of taste patty in my um, tasty's patty in your fridge. You go on, man. Marianne Hall, just roll, just roll, just roll, just roll. No, carry on, just roll, just roll. Lady Saul, Lady Saul, Marianne Hall. Well, it look even, so I'm going to roll right into Marianne Hall, Lady Saul. Shout out to Urban Islands. Hear this. Uh, <laughs> wait there, let's take this phone call real quick. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. I don't know why the phone not ringing. I'm in SoFlo, wait a point. Morning, family. Me there, you know. There. Yeah, man, Just. Ah, uh, I'm to your phone now. Hold on, let me turn my TV. I can't have it to your time. I have a pass speaker, Bluetooth, or something. Can you? We can't hear you. We're gonna yeah, talk man. about Minister Marion Hall right now, banned yeah. by a church ahead of her reggae Sumfest performance. Shout out yeah, to Marion Hall. All right, talk to you now. Yeah, man. As you mentioned about the the can poker actually there. Yeah. Slap pins. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that, brother. And I years me not eat pork, you know, brother. If you, if if you tell some people right now, say yeah, man, Yo, you might eat pork, then I'll say what? Him? Uh, no. Nah. Yeah, my wife always calling in the morning and yell up your thing. Ah, yeah. ah. So big yeah, up man, to I wife and big up to you. Are, are you? Are you? Are you? Me tell wife yourself a big up for me. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> man, as I respect King, and she talk, she talk about you yeah, like a brother. king. See? <laughs> Y'all live good life, man. <laughs> Y'all live good life. You ain't not hot up like some man here. I feel hot them up. <laughs> yeah. Talk, yeah, good woman in your life. You live good life, not true? Is it? All Is right, it? sir. Are the are good, enough? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, man, so <laughs> me I tell about the Akiani camp out there, those... About two months ago, me, 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 me make some out of door there, you know. Mm -hmm. Me season it, just as you talk about, you can't you poke yourself mm -hmm. and put it on for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And then make you it so hockey there. Oh, Jesus God, man. Christ, <laughs> I can't come in for Oh, God, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then something make you numb till you, you have to say to yourself, what? your crib, you man, you have to stop, you know. <laughs> Left some height. Come in, numb till my belly bang, you know, like pregnant cow. <laughs> 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 my father said, no, so flow. This so is say, greediness. So, I'm going to back up them there with the caramel dumpling, man. My father said, wait, I won't make you eat so much. Mm. <laughs> uh, then, I have to understand. It, 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 it's a nostalgic right, thing. Man, as I respect you, my king. Yeah, man, link up. All right. All so. right. All right. <laughs> All right. Look, come off of this food thing, you know. So, <laughs> I didn't cook it out at door to at them. The kind of food that's going to stop the man. I'm going to stop the one because now we're talking about wood fire and cast iron pot and them, something there. Remember, a three foot pot was stop. All right. Minister Marion Hall banned by church ahead of Reggae Sumfest performance. Now, if you look at the icon for this video for this morning, you will see a very sexy Minister Marion Hall in the center of the picture, the icon for this video this morning. See? When I did the video on the icon, um, I think I'm. Wifey did say, oh, who that spice or who that? She said, who that something, somebody else. I'm going to say, no, a lady saw our Minister Marion Hall, and she's going to be performing at some fest. See? And she says, some fest. I'm going to say, yeah, I think she'll go in a like them, have a gospel section to it and whatever. You know me that try to defend her and say, well, Lieutenant Stitchy do the same thing. I'm a DJ gospel and nobody now say nothing. I don't know why Mar uh, Minister Marion Hall is getting such a beating and these things. Shout out to the woman that said, I'm always disrespectful when speaking about her, which is a lie because I'm not. I have the utmost respect for her. But that story, here people are saying, fling her out, pan her heels, kick her off a bench. Yes, ban her rotted. Minister Marion Hall, formerly known as Lady Saw, says that the church community in Jamaica has been pressuring promoters who are hiring her because of her decision to perform at Reggae Sumfest later this year, as well as the way she recently dressed. May I tell you, so she look, you know, when, them, when they were them calling it TV top, she look real, she look sexy. Yeah, Minister Marion Hall looks sexy. And um, me, I look upon her like, oh, you still have it. But, you know, it. anyhow, there have been several reports that Minister Hall has been banned by the church over the appearance. 
The artist recently shared her new track, which is called I'm Doing Better, which has caused quite a buzz as the song appears to be a dancehall track. Like I said before, double standard. How come them now beat Luton and Stitchy uh, and Papa San? Anyhow, Luton and Stitchy more than anybody. So many of her fans and members of the Christian community have criticized Marianne Hall for her appearance at the show. No, you shouldn't do some fest. Some fest? Where do they so? Some fest is considered secular. The artist later revealed that she planned to give away Bibles at the event. And she has started a Bible giveaway fund where fans have contributed to aid her. Why we full of Bible at Jamaica still me. I think nobody else needs no more Bible. They need something else. But anyway, do what your heart desires. However, all is not well. As she says that she has received major pushback and one of her upcoming events has even been cancelled. Now, while performing during a sermon, Minister Marianne Hall explained that she was going to be attending dance hall events that she has been booked for. This is news which might concern some fans. She said, I'm about to go to some places. How about this? How about this? Urban Islands have her actually sitting there saying it. So, me I gonna read it, but you, if you want to see her on Urban Islands saying it herself, she just did the video, okay? Um, the video works fine. On urban islands and all right I'm gonna make Uno go over there because that's how we share right we share platform that way them can say so flow just rip off with thing and just go read the film audience uh play the whole video and everything geez so nobody know i'm no incentive to come over here then so I'm I'm conscious of that, right? And stuff like that. So I will read it to you because it's here. But you can go see her saying this herself. She said, I'm about to go to some places that some of you wouldn't want to go and wouldn't want me to go. But it's time. God is doing what he's doing. So I'm going to some concerts that you're going to be like, what is she doing there? I'm going to the jerk fest them. I'm going to the groove in the park. I'm going to anything that is clean, anything that family and children is at. She explained, quote unquote, noting that she is going to take the gospel into these places. Now, Minister Marion Hall went on to say that her decision to start back, to resume, going back to performing in dance hall, that's news, right? She's back. This is her announcing she's going back into dance hall. The Minister Marion Hall, or the artist, went on to say that her decision to resume performing at dance hall events is not welcomed by the church as she revealed that she was removed as a performer at an event that was hosted by gospel artist Papa San. Papa San. Due to backlash from church members. I read in the next article that Papa San actually has a church, which I didn't know of. And I also think that the church is over here, but I don't know. Um, maybe I read wrong. Can't find the article again, though. He said that, this is what she said. She said, he said, it's not really that to know. But it's just that the church, you know, and boy, it's a lot of backlashing. And the sponsors. And I'm listening to see what then. And you know, he said, I know you can shine. You know. But I'm like, you know what? Okay. He said, I'll give you back your money. He said, okay. The artist said that she didn't want to go back. She didn't want to give back the money since her name was already used to promote the event. But she later decided to hand over back the money to them. So then put her upon it, use her to promote the event, and then cancel her back off of the event, right? And it was up to her to either keep the money or to give the money back. And she said, one hand, she didn't want to give it back because you already used my name and image to promote the event. And But at the end of the day, she was like, you know what? She gave back the money. 
Didn't want to give it back, but since she already used it, uh, but okay. The artist added that she doesn't care about the church's position. She doesn't care about the church's position. So if the church won't have me, I'm going to the people who will have me. Because the church don't want me because they said I dress in something sheer the other day. She said referring to her sexy outfit promoting her new song that showed out her belly area. Like I said, if you look at the icon of this, you will see this exact outfit that they're talking about. When I first saw it, there's a part of me that said, well, this is not church call. I've been going to church and see. I could imagine her coming to my old time church when Mass Victor them did in the church and them see her walking in a dot. There would have been hell and powder house in the church, but we're in a different time. Seeing? Seeing. So, so if the church won't have me, I'm going to the people who will have me because the church don't want me because they said that I'm dressed in something sheer the other day. She said, referring to the sexy outfit. While she was promoting her song that showed out her belly area. She explained that God directed her to wear that outfit. I forgot to consult God when I dress for God at night time. But God directed her to wear, to wear that outfit. Did you not read Jeremiah? Did you not read Isaiah? Strip naked? Preaching the word of God? Did I not tell you about what the Lord told me after he dressed me like that to get you all attention? Guess what he said? Preach a sermon titled, When God Breaks Protocol. Box side. God broke protocol that day. He dressed me like that. Hall said. Sometimes he has to do crazy things to get on a crazy head to see what he's doing. She continued adding that even though the church won't have her, they can keep it as the church is in me. The former chart-topping chart -topping dance hall artist also had a strong message for her Christian critics. Some of know her said she shouldn't and she wrong. Hear this. She said, Keep your church. You don't have to invite me at your church. There is someone, there is some who will, but whoever can't handle me, you can't handle my praise because why would I be up in your church not praising? So what do you mean you're telling them, don't bring me? You remind me of when I was in Jamaica and Montego Bay banned me when I was X-rated. Now the church is banning me. Oh, God of glory. The artist also called out the church members for not understanding that God is using her in his own unique way. Come to court. Wagwan, want to talk to me? <laughs> Talk to me, Wagwan. Uh, Kaitaja Emperor says, I don't see anything wrong with what she's wearing. If you look at some of these maga, these, <laughs> these mega churches, the first ladies of TBN. I never see them in an outfit like that, though, Kaitaja. I never see them like show off belly skin on these things, but uh, it, they, they do wear similar outfits. I just didn't see the skin showing, you know? What happened to the Bible verse that says, come as you are, Katai Jai Empress says. So she is all lady sought out this morning. Uh, for real, what happened to that Bible verse that I said, come as you are? The Bible verse said, come as you are. So if you are coming to minister and you come in a G-string, I will pay attention. Especially if the body fat and the pum pum is buff. I'm a married man, but me take a one to glimpse still and then go on like me never look. Me just accept. Come as you are. That can be stretched pretty far. Come as you are. Yeah. She gone in a Bible verse. She's <laughs> she got she got in a Bible. Can you hear me? I go on like me never look, you know, but me a man. God forgive me. Me, me, me just say two God forgive me and me really mean them and me go about my business. Right? But you can imagine. If she actually came in tongues 
and the body did high up round there, everybody would be there. Uh, 60. She said that sometimes God has to do crazy things to get on a crazy head. If we see what he's doing. Me not see it. Me not seeing it. I'm not to lay the size this. Go and go do your thing here, mama. That's it. Go and go do your thing. At, at this point, it's been going on for too long. And either lady saw really, really believes that God did dress her and <laughs> tell her figure, or she, she, she's on a charade. But whatever the case may be, at the end of the day, I don't really see no problem with her performing at some fest because Luton and Stitchy and Papa San and these men, them do the same thing and nobody will beat them, right? Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. I was actually looking forward morning, to her so, performing Good morning, here. So I, um, Can you please hide my ID, please? Hide my ID. Yes, man. You're well hidden. Okay. Um. <laughs> for, for you know I love the ID. song, right? Yes. I mean, no. You're custom out there. Please don't tell. Right? Don't tell. Don't tell SoFlo. Don't tell. You know I love Lady So and everything? Mm -hmm. And, you know... I have to make a confession because I cannot be a downfall liar, right? I wanted her back so bad. She's she's coming back, tipping back, whatever. Um, and I'm happy. But I have to say, Mr. Vegas was right. Oh God, see that now. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, um, <laughs> I, I I can't lie. Wait, yeah, you cost me out some lady saw one time. You said Mr. Vegas was know, right. <laughs> I remember when um <laughs> um she said she saw Vegas and he looked like a devil and she seen beads in his eyes. <laughs> she said she saw him at the airport and he was telling her, come on, mama, come on, make back your money. And she said he was a devil. <laughs> and so saw in his eyes like beads. So well on, Mr. Vegas gonna <laughs> invite her back to come, 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 yes. come make back your money. <laughs> Yo, hello, come back, man. Come here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm happy, though. And I'm happy, so you know what can't be a dancer. You, you think, dance wait, no, you think she's going to go from singing praises in the dance hall back to, yes, the man left. Why if she bust out like that in the middle? She well, is I'm, so wrong. <laughs> She's singing gospel, but it's wrong. The gospel sound like no, I'm not like, and no disrespect, but sometimes mm. they're gospel and our preaching sound like she want to fight. And yes, it, it, yes. Does have the, it, it does have the, may we put on the Bible and uh, freak you up in a real life kind of yes. feel to it. Yes, you know? said that already. Yes, you said come out, kiss on my Bible. Yes, 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 the people that already feel for come back to she said it's time. <laughs> Big up yourself here. Yeah? Uh, yeah, anyway, so far to come on up because of the yeah? All right, manners. <laughs> yeah. 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 The lady starts to come kiss out my Bible. Mm. When the lady starts to come kiss out my Bible, you know, the, I, I actually hear the come kiss out and I mean, mm -mm -mm. Uh, uh, come in and uh, she just fling Bible in there instead. But I know her mind was thinking something else because for the one time gone yeah you would have get the proper reading but she have to, uh, fix it up now we only have two minutes left in here before me getting in trouble and there's a story here that i really wanted to get into but me not about to get into it we're gonna do a whole different video on it and send you the video today those are our topics of the morning vibes cartel ep is out it's called numb what is your favorite track on numb I think that home is an international hit. We're bringing her home. I think that's an international hit. Um, Without you is bad. But my favorite is I only wanted you. I only wanted you. This, the, the whole EP bad. Listen, go listen to the music. For those of you who I tell to go listen to the music and you don't want to go, you know, I'm paying no money for it. Just go over to his Vivo home, King Biggs home is huge. Just when I bought him, pick her up, brown, Finch and Jane. So big up to my Canadian family as well. In there, you know, the man thing global. 
Uh, if you don't want to go spend money to get it, which I did and wifey did, but we have the uh, when you Amazon Music. So if you don't want to do all that and pay your monthly subscription and get the new album, go on his Vivo on YouTube and get it there. And you can listen to all the tracks there. Now, later, I will do a complete different video for this EP called Numb. Home is the biggest one for me on it. And let me say shout out to Savage, Savo, because he really showed out on, uh, which one Savo the pan again? It's not vaccine. About last night is big too. The search is over, it's different. Playboy Bunny, home, I only wanted you. Numb and without you. But a uh, home, Savo the pan? All right, see it there? A uh, home in the pan, and home is an international hit. Savage bought the bought here a long time. Um, come wine, panicolo, colo, and uh, all that. But yeah, that one right there, home, that's it for me. Zodrak Worldwide, my message before I leave. Only take two minutes. Zodrak, listen to this. Cartel, listen to this. I would love to play every one of them tune here this morning. Uh, anytime I play the music, the comment section, a beer fire emoji, fire emoji, and the people them enjoy themselves. Me telling people to go listen to it, 99% of these people are not going to go listen to it based off of me telling them. So, you see, if me play a piece of the music, yes, sir, and then me say, all right, cut it. If you want to hear the rest of the song, go over to Cartel's Vivo, they will go because them done hear a piece already and want to hear the rest, right? The thing about Zojak is this. Me do a two-hour live video one time, and in there for about one minute of two hours, I played a cartel song. And you know, sir, Zojak had YouTube remove my complete two-hour video from YouTube. Now, mind you, you know, the rest of the video was about other topics like we do in the morning. I may have said to myself, said this can't be smart business. I get a notification, say your video was removed from YouTube. Blocked in all countries. And I, I, I'm, they send you who did it. And I saw Zojak worldwide. Zojak, listen. You can you have an option, okay? As a distributor, you have an option with YouTube. I don't know if you don't know it, but you have an option with YouTube where you can decide to split revenues or something like that. I will even give you the whole of the revenue them. So you can keep the revenue for that video when I do it. Just don't strike my damn channel because when you strike my channel or when you have them take down the whole video, I lose a whole lot of content. Imagine me losing this whole this morning whole video just for this last minute here so that I'm talking about. It makes no sense. All right. So yeah, help the thing, help the thing in a proper way. And I know at the end of the day, you're a business person, our people. So business ends with what? Profits, right? Cash. Bottom line. Okay. If you have us do it, review it that way, it only leads to more people heading right over to the artist page. If you go hear the rest of the song, them seeing some a message to Zojak that this morning stop strike and take down my whole long, long video, them for 30 seconds of and one minute of a cartel something, right? Cartel, talk to them and then make we can get something going on the live. Pan yaso. If y'all see me doing a whole live with beer music, just know says so not going to be up later because I'm gonna have to take it right back down. With that said, Cinnamon Toast Cinnamon, shout out to you, Cinnamon Toast Cinnamon says. I love listening to you, but don't be a selfish. Uh, it's a shellfish, Ross. All right. Manners and respect to each and every one of you tuning in. Have a wonderful day. Go with love. Go with God. I'll see you all tomorrow right here on Morning Thoughts. God spare with life. And I'm going to pray for Lady Sa because us in the dance hall, we want our back. So if she come back and come back as Lady Sa, and not Marianne Hall, none of we now go complain. We're just ready for the song them again. See? I'm out. Peace. <laughs>